Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming here. Please uh, enjoy our lunch and uh, listen to our presentation. My name is Chen. I'm a software developer on Lightning SDK team. Our team is responsible for validating and storing and rendering your Lightning components. With me is uh, Farhan. Uh, thank you, Chen. My name is Farhan Tahir. I'm a product director on the platform, and I run our customer-facing UI technology, so Visual Force Canvas, and today we're going to talk about Lightning components. I also manage the security model for Lightning, which is Locker Service, and I also have a couple of slides towards the end where we'll talk about Locker Service. But Chen is going to start off, and I'm going to come in later uh, in 15 minutes. First and foremost, forward-looking statements. Uh, the Upcoming features that I mentioned in this presentation may change once it gets released. Make your purchasing decisions based on what's in production today. So in terms of debugging Lightning components, uh, we can basically divide them into um, these basically two um, different types, compile time versus runtime. So in compile time, that's when you make an edit, when you save your new Lightning components, or when you install a magic package to another org. Um, yeah, at this time, normally, you can already see if something goes wrong, there will be a window pop-up where it will be a one error message in the API to tell you what's wrong. Uh, I'm sure that lots of you have seen the internal server errors. Um, but that's actually something we're working on in the current release. We're trying to convert them to more meaningful error messages and tell you where exactly it goes wrong. So look forward to it in the next release. Next up in runtime, there are a few things you can do. The first one is to enab enable debug mode for Aminified JavaScript. Because sometimes when you try to debug your application, your JavaScript in the Lightning components already minified to give it better performance. Um, so this is a setting inside the setup. And if you enable debug mode, and what you see in your browser is Aminified JavaScript, which is same as source, and you can easily debug through there. And next thing is uh, Salesforce Lightning Inspector. This is a Chrome plugin where you can install to your Chrome browser. And whenever you are inside a Lightning Experience environment or your Lightning Component environment, uh, you can basically use it. Let me show you a quick demo of it. And here's the loading. Um, Lightning Experience. Then you open up your Chrome developer tools at the bottom. You'll see there's Lightning. You click on it. It basically offer you a list of uh, functionalities you can use. The first one is uh, a rundown of component tree. And as you can see, all the things, most of the things in here, they are converted to the actual Lightning component content, so you'll know which component being used uh, and how they're structured with other parts. Uh, of the UI. And when you go through a different one of them, then different parts of the UI will get highlighted, tell you which components rendering which part of the UI. Currently, we do not support uh, selection or modification of uh, the DOM directly from here, but those ones will come in the future. This one is useful sometimes when you develop your Lightning components. Lots of components get together. You're not sure uh, which part of the UI is rendered by which component. Um, and even better use cases is uh, when you try, when you see a good Lightning component developed by another person or a team or by Salesforce, you can log in here um, and see how, what exactly component they are used and how they are being used. And next tab is performance. You can basically record um, part of your actions. And we will stop. It will tell you how much time is taken in which step and which component and consumed how much resource. Here's a quick UI chart. And you can also just drill down to part of it and uh, see the details. You can also have a list view percentage-wise and see which component, for example, here. Lots of time is spent on or if, and you can maybe find a way. If it's your own component, you can see if there's any way to optimize that. All the components here are Salesforce software because we're inside the Lightning experience. Transaction tab. Um, this one is basically you put marker at a certain place. Um, and when certain events get triggered, you can see 
um, they all get logged in here. Currently, there's only Salesforce can set those markers, but eventually, the, uh, you will be able to set that too. Next one is event log. It records part of your uh, actions. You can see which events get triggered, and when you open it, you can see who's the color. It's really useful when you have a bunch of Lightning components, and as you all, you, if you try Lightning component development, you know when there are lots of events firing around, and it's kind of hard to track which goes where. And in here, you basically in each event, you can see which component is firing this event and which code is actually firing the event. And also, what's the call stack and during which layers and this event actually gets triggered. Um, they even give us a view of, uh, let's see if I can make that bigger. Have a structured view of uh, how the events get structured. Sometimes there's only one component fire one event to another component. Sometimes it's one to many, and sometimes it's multiple layers of events. As you can see, it will make your life much easier when the application gets larger. And then in the action tab, you can have uh, a list of uh, actions that your client side fire to the server side. In here, all the, all the metrics are here. What's the ID, what's the storage key, and so for the ones that's a payload and what's the payload putting the request, what's came back in the response. And my favorite feature is here is you can drag certain actions from left hand side to right hand side and here you can make modification to it. You can override the result. It's almost like mocking a server side event and you can just purely debug debugging your client side without really having to make real requests to a server. And finally, storage part and shows you what's actually get stored on the client side. Um, you can clearly see what's in here, what's the size of each storage, and uh, what's the content of it. There's not much uh, in here, but as you develop more, you'll be able to, be able to see more um, in this area as well. There's more like lightning focus metrics compared to the one in Chrome, where you can see what's in your client side storage. So remember, Lightning Inspector is very useful in your debugging. Uh, so that's uh, how it helps you for client-side debugging. Now, how do you debugging server-side? For Lightning, server side is majorly just Apex controller. Uh, if you use Apex before, most likely you already have used this feature. Inside your server-side controller, you can write system the debug statement. So after this method got called in, in the APAS debug log, you will be able to see the actual debug statement gets printed with the variable you pass in to the statement. So if you want to purely debug server side without really interact with your client side, you can also just execute the APAS method or whatever APAS code from developer console, uh, just execute that part of APAS code directly uh, from that window, and you're able to directly see the results from uh, the logs at the bottom. So I hope you learned something, find those tools useful, make your life easier. And next, uh, let uh, Farhan to introduce a bunch of upcoming features in Lightning. I hope this works. Okay. Uh, my name is Farhan. Again, I'm a product director on the platform, and I uh, run our customer-facing UI technologies. So Chen mentioned what's out there today in terms of debugging and testing. What I wanted to do is take it a step further and let you guys know what's in store in the next couple of releases, which are uh, Spring 17 coming out in Feb and Summer 17 coming out in June. So one of the biggest stories that we're working on right now for the Feb release, Spring 17 release, is around improved developer experience. What that means is we want to enable every platform developer to be able to view human-readable, self-explanatory error messages from their custom components so they can debug and fix those issues themselves without having to log support cases, which obviously adds time to your debugging, uh, development processes. A couple of other things also in Spring 17 are the support for unbound expressions. 
you can call attributes by reference or by value. If you call them by reference, you get bi-directional data binding. But it also takes a performance hit. So with the Spring 17, we'll support the calling of uh, attributes by value, which means uh, it won't have bi-directional data binding, but for those use cases, we'll give you, giving you a switch for your performance tuning needs. Uh, a lot of customers come to me and say, I want to build a Skype integration, but Skype does not allow their JavaScript to be hosted on Salesforce. They will only allow their JavaScript to be hosted on the Microsoft.com uh, domain. So how do I uh, run my site Skype integrations? Google has certain libraries that they do not allow to be hosted on any domain other than Google.com, uh, which means you cannot add them as a static resource. So also in the Spring 17 release, there will be a new feature uh, which is called CSP Trusted Sites, which will allow you in the setup menu to whitelist a particular domain for script source, and then you can call, directly call out that URL without having to upload it as a static resource from the Lightning components. Uh, somebody already likes that feature. And the developer is sitting right here in the pink shirt on us. <laughs> All right. Uh, yesterday, Bill Maggs uh, presented, I think, a 30-minute session on the component builder. This is more focused around system admins and citizen developers. What that means is, like the, Dev con the, the, like the existing Dev Console, this will replace the Dev Console for Lightning platform development. A system admin or a system developer or a citizen developer can come into this component builder and have a really guided experience in terms of component development. I have a really bad screenshot because I'm covering up the, uh, the fancy stuff right here. But basically, the fancy stuff is giving you a list of attributes that you can change, drag and drop. For example, you're building a component. You want that component to get the data from the account field. You do not have to write the code to get, uh, to get data from the account field. From simply from the draw, uh, drop down right here, you will pick the S object, and the code will populate for you as well. If you want to use the component in a quick action, you do not have to write the code for it. You simply, on the right side of the screen, say, I want this to be in the uh, quick action, and then the code is automatically written for you. So it's a lot more guided experience for a system developers and a citizen, uh, sorry, for a system admins and a citizen developers. Another thing it does is it has a built-in trailhead browser. So now you do not have to go search for trailhead. It will already recommend to you trailhead modules from within the same UI experience. And other functions like the component library on autocomplete and component library, uh, because as we grow our components, nobody can remember all the components that we provide uh, that are available to you. So it will, uh, do you auto-suggest autocomplete on our component libraries? Again, uh, our plan is to GA this in the summer. We might do a dev preview in the spring release for the component builder. And, uh, Chen is here, and he's right now working on the uh, Lightning testing service. In Apex today, we allow you to write uh, server-side text say, test saying, uh, by saying at, uh, at test or at is test, which will allow you to validate, you know, do your sanity check. You have to do it for code coverage for Apex as well. Uh, for your server-side Apex controllers. We want to bring the same technology to the client-side Lightning components. Uh, we will, again, do a dev preview in the spring, GA this in summer. So what you'll see in the dev preview in spring is, in your Lightning component bundle, you will see a new resource testing. That is where you write your JavaScript Lightning component test. In, again, in the spring 17 release, it will be the, your test will be packageable. So when you package the bundle, the tests go with it. And from within the UI, you will be able to run uh, the test, whether one of them or all of them. So this is giving you a quick uh, example of uh, the model window that will pop up when you click the testing service button. You will select three or four tests and run them, and you will see the results in the browser itself. We will take that experience to the next level in Summer 17 by giving you an API for running your test asynchronously. So you will call an API, say, uh, run this particular test or run all of the tests, and it will go in synchronously make a uh, run on our uh, the test on our side in a headless browser and bring you back the results, which will help you in uh, integrate uh, this testing for your Lightning components with our your in existing continuous, continuous integration systems. Um, last but not the least, uh, another thing Chen is working on for the summer uh, 17 release is the ability to gather tests. Let's say you have seven different applications. One is sales, one is coding, one is recruiting. You will be able to gather the tests in a test suite however you want, 
So if says, you'll be able to then say, I just want to run tests for my quoting application. Hit the button for that particular test suite, your quoting application test will run. Now I want to run them for my recruiting application. So basically, it gives you a really nice ability to, with API or UI, to gather your test in testing suites. Our partners have done a lot of work since Lightning Platform came out in terms of providing you tools for Lightning Platform development. We have uh, text mix editors such as Sublime. We have full-fledged IDEs. We have Cloud9-like web IDEs. So in parallel, uh, we worked on Lightning component or Lightning Platform development for Eclipse Force.com IDE. Uh, we, uh, it's with uh, the Winter 17 release. And it has a lot of uh, uh, really cool features, such as very similar to the experience I was talking about for the admins with the Lightning Component Builder. This is for professional developers, but it will give, uh, give them a lot of those features, such as autocomplete, uh, how your events are fired and handled. You'll be able to view all of that. Built-in documentation browser, and lots of other uh, features for your platform development. My favorite feature coming in dev preview for the Winter 17 release. Winter 17 goes out either this weekend or next weekend, depending on what instance you are on. And as soon as your instance gets Winter 17 release, you will be able to use this in a dev preview fashion. Visual Force is a concept of standard controller. I say standard controller equals the account or any S, uh, custom or standard S object. And my Visual Force page becomes metadata aware. I do not have to write a server-side Apex controller with SQL queries to get account.name. My Visual Force just knows the account metadata. We want to bring that same capability for Lightning components, uh, which, again, is dev preview in the uh, Winter 17 GA and Spring 17. What that will allow you to do is say force record and give it a record ID, which is any customer standard object. By doing that, you are making your Lightning component metadata aware of that particular S object. No more writing uh, Apex code, and no more writing SQL queries. But how does this relate to testing and debugging? If you're not writing the, the Apex controller, you don't have to test or debug it. So you're making your life easier by completely removing uh, the need, uh, in some uh, circumstances, to write Apex test. What Lightning also brings to you is shared record caching, which means if your component is using a Lightning Data Service, it will have shared record caching on the client side, which will make it a lot more faster than components that are not using uh, Lightning Data Service. Lightning components today do not enforce CRUD and FLS. If your Lightning components are using Lightning Data Service, you automatically get CRUD and SLS. Another thing that you get for free is offline support whether you're using this Lightning component in a mobile uh, S1 device or on your desktop. Uh, again, this is one of the features. Uh, it's sort of a theme. We're dev previewing in spring and releasing in the summer. So Lightning container component, the idea behind it is to enable any MVC developer to build on top of the Lightning platform. So from the look and feel of it, these components, when you're looking uh, from an end user perspective, will not look any different. But a developer would know that on the back end, these components, instead of being written in Aura, these components will be written with Angular 2, React, or whatever MVC you're using. And that application, third-party MVC application, is being hosted in a static resource on the Salesforce platform. There's uh, one different unique thing about these components. These components will be iframed in your Lightning experience. So you can still drag and drop them from the lab or use them any way you want, just like you use regular Lightning components. But these will always be iframed. It has two advantages. Number one, the Aura J uh, JavaScript, which is our JavaScript, will not collide with your JavaScript. And number two, if you're debugging a particular issue, you will cleanly know the boundaries of your code, which is third-party MVC, and our code because of the iframe. All right, everybody's uh, favorite topic is locker service. Locker service, our goal with locker service is to provide security built into the technology. So security is is no longer an afterthought which comes after the development process. So we don't want, like you build you know, 100 Lightning components, 
and then something happens and then you start thinking about security. We want to ha enable everybody to have a mindset that when you're writing your Lightning components or any other component in the Lightning platform, security is just built into it. So with Locker Service, I'll uh, share a slide about ro uh, rollout, but what it does is it will enforce uh, strict mode, which is you won't be able to say blah equals 33. You have to say var variable blah equals 33. This also applies to any third-party libraries that you're using. Uh, recently, because uh, high charts, as an example, was not strict mode compliant, uh, we logged a bug on high charts, uh, and the community upvoted it. And as of two weeks ago, high chart released a version of their JS, uh, of their uh, JS, which is strict mode compliant. So this will apply to your code and third-party code that uh, third-party libraries. DOM access means. If I have 10 different Lightning components, some from Salesforce, some from one managed package, some from another managed package, because all of them can say access the same DOM, they all have access to the data rendered on the component. So if I have a finance component and some other component from a different namespace, this component, although it's in a different namespace, can scrape the DOM and get the finance data, which makes it unsecure. So Locker Service will enforce your components to be only able to see your particular DOM elements. Uh, we will give you secure versions of window, uh, document, and element. Uh, and this will be seamless to you. So you don't have to say secure window. You will just use your regular window. But with Locker Service, it will give you a secure version of the window, which will allow us to uh, access control the object itself and its properties. Uh, we've <laughs> we always support. And we've always documented that you, as a platform developer, should only use the publicly documented Lightning APIs. But we've never been able to restrict them. And what ha is happening is we are using un uh, undocumented Aura APIs, and a release goes on, and we change something on the Aura side of with these APIs, and your component breaks. So with Locker Service, we will enforce uh, you, uh, the development in such a way that you can only use documented supported Lightning APIs. Last but not the least is content security policy, which will disallow things like unsafe eval and unsafe inline. And this has a direct relationship with XSS. XSS is basically a way of hacking your data by putting in malicious scripts into your websites. And with, when CSP is enforced, because you are uh, disallowing unsafe eval and unsafe inline, including in your libraries, if you have to update your versions of your libraries to the modern versions which support CSP, uh, XSS attacks, which are 84% of all web uh, security attacks, will be protected uh, against. You will be protected against. So I have like 100 writing components. Uh, how do I know if my code today is Locker Service compliant? There's two different ways. Number one is the Salesforce Lightning CLI. You can download it for free. It's available to everybody from the Hiloku tool belt. And when you run it on your desktop, you give it your org. And you run it on your desktop, it will list each and every uh, issue with your Lightning component, along with line number, along with the reason it's throwing you uh, error. So if I have an organization, I'll run the CLI tool, it will say, hey, you can't say A equals 33. You have to say variable A equals 33 because now you're running in strict mode. It will say you cannot use $a.eventService because that is a public unsupported API. It will say you cannot use on line 43, you cannot use unsafe eval because of CSP policies. The second thing, which this is the first time that uh, I'm publicly announcing this, is if you go to documentation.auraframework.org, we will give you a complete list of the browser APIs that Locker Service supports. So the green stuff is already uh, in Locker. What about this red stuff? This red stuff is saying, today we do not plan on supporting these particular APIs because we believe, number one, it will imp uh, open up some security issues. And number two, uh, we believe this functionality, maybe not the safe evals, so this is a bad example, but this functionality can be achieved via certain other using certain other methods. But we can have a, definitely have a conversation about these uh, red uh, browser API methods, uh, and we can help you work around them, or maybe there is a solution 
uh, on our side that we can expose these. So a good example is Blob is not open right now, but we are working, we already have a way, we're just coding it to expose Blob uh, in, within Locker service. All right, so my last slide is uh, Locker service rollout. With this winter 17 release, Locker service is a critical update, which means you can go to setup, critical update, turn Locker on and off however you want. If you have a Winter 17 org and you do not see the ability to turn it off and on, I believe the patch is either tonight or next Wednesday. So in a week, every org on Winter 17 will have the ability to turn Locker on and off. Uh, so you can test your code with Locker compliance. The important part is, on the last slide I said, CLI will tell you about your CSP warnings. But in Winter 17, the critical update is not enforcing CSP. It is enforcing strict mode, it is enforcing uh, your, uh, your publicly listed APIs, but it's not enforcing CSP. So in the winter 17 release, uh, sorry, spring 17 release, which comes out in Feb, uh, we will also enforce CSP as part of the same critical update. So in spring 17, CSP is added on top of already existing in winter 17, strict mode APIs and other stuff. And then we'll give you another release until summer 17, uh, to test all of your code with CSP, strict mode, before we enforce Locker service. So basically, until uh, summer 17, you can t turn Locker off and on as many times as you like. In summer, uh, we enforce it. So you can, you can think of it uh, from a security perspective. Starting summer 17, you're living in a utopia on the Lightning platform because security is built into it. That is all I had. Uh, we have a couple of minutes for questions, but even if we don't, I, and Chen and I will be around along with Nas to answer any of your questions that you have. Uh, but I really appreciate you coming down. Uh, thank you and enjoy your Dreamforce.